Hey, everybody. Welcome back. The honeymoon from hell. Jake and I had just gotten married and we were so excited to go to Mexico for our honeymoon at the beach. But instead, on our second day, Jake ran a moped into a cactus, which caused 35 spikes to go into his legs. So we drove around for two hours trying to find a doctor that would pull the spines out. And when we left, there still were six cactus spines in his foot. So the whole time we were trying to make sure it wasn't infected. I took Jake out to dinner after and he got food poisoning from that dinner. Oh my God. And I stayed up all night the next two nights making sure that his foot wasn't getting infected. And I tried to give him some mango from our Airbnb tree. And turns out he was allergic to no! them. So his face swelled up. And then the dog at the Airbnb ate my shoe. <laughs> and then we were worried that Jake would get an infection. So we wanted to get out as soon as we could and buy new tickets. But we had to buy all new tickets and they spelled Jake's name wrong by one letter and then refused to fix the mistake so we had to buy yet another ticket for him Bro. so we bought five tickets total for two people and then we got on a plane and we decided to try it again in Orlando <laughs> ah wow it just kept getting worse didn't it this is the thing about vacationing abroad if you get hurt you're kind of screwed. And like, we all love to think that we want, oh, I just want to live here forever. You know, you've, you've said that before, right? You've heard someone say it, you go on vacation. It's like, I'm never going home. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I mean, the good thing about Mexico though, is that you can just buy pretty much any pharmaceutical drug without a prescription. So that's good. Hey, there you go. Silver lining. Or is it? I don't know. You said in sickness and in health and Jake said bet. <laughs> It's true. It's like, okay, we're starting this marriage off really right. Yes. The sickness and in health is supposed to come like later, you know, like not right now. Like, does it have to be right now? Can we like postpone that part? I'd be so annoyed with Jake, despite knowing it's not his fault. I would be annoyed at the situation, you know? It really isn't his fault but it kinda is. Mexico did everything in its power to take Jake out. <laughs> Mexico be like, we don't want you here. Go home. I would have left Jake at home. <laughs> <laughs> I'd get life insurance sooner rather than later. Yeah, that should be at the top of your to-do list, you know? <laughs> get the will sorted ASAP. Moral of the story, Jake needs a bubble. Can we just put him in one of those big inflatable bubbles? That's just his punishment for being Jake. <laughs> Jake, don't go to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mexico is great. We love Mexico, but we also get traveler's diarrhea every time we go to Mexico. So bring some Imodium with you, if you know what I'm saying, like a couple of packs. <laughs> Imodium is a very, very hot commodity. When your husband wakes up with a fever the day before you fly home from your honeymoon. Oh, is it, is it, is it, is it the COVID? You have the COVID, my dear? You, you have the sickness? Oh, ah, ah, ah. oh, it's like bags packed and everything, dang. Yeah. Imagine packing all of your bags and getting ready to go on your honeymoon only to have to go and get a COVID test. Probably not have to go on your honeymoon anymore. Yeah, yeah. Sister-in-law and the honeymoon. I was asked to create a post about this from some users. Recap, Jim and Kathy got married in June. Kathy and my mother-in-law, we'll call her Coral, called me to ask for my husband and I to pay for their honeymoon, which was $5,600. Why? Because we could afford it. I said no and was told that I was ruining her vision of her day and I hung up. The wedding came with some very bumpy parts, but they did get married. Yay! Kathy berated everyone who did not give money or buy from the registry during the reception. Really? We left shortly after her crying slash berating everyone. I was so pissed I couldn't think straight. Not once did she say, thank you for traveling to see this or thank you for accommodating my crazy behavior. My husband mentioned in the car on the way to the airport that Coral pulled him aside and asked if he could help fix their honeymoon situation. Since they had no backup, they were just gonna come home and pout. My husband, Tim, said, sure, I'll talk to OP and we can maybe have them come down for a visit. We live near the beach, we'll have nice weather and plenty to do. Coral proceeded to pull Kathy over and said, Tim and OP have invited you and Jim for a week visit. How fun. Oh, yay. Oh. Kathy then proceeded to give Tim a hug and said they would be in touch tomorrow to finalize plans. Tim said, I will need to run things by OP as she's a teacher and has to go back to work soon. So we will let you know if that works. Coral said, oh, I'm sure OP won't mind Tim. Let me handle that. Let's, uh, let's be clear about this. She, she minds. <laughs> 
She minds a lot. Good Lord, I was mad when I heard this was all planned even before I had heard about it. So in the end, I thought this was a peace offering for Kathy and I to get along. Maybe I'd been unfair to her, I don't know. Once we got back, we scheduled for them to arrive on June 25th, a week after they married. We found cheap tickets through Frontier. Yay, even better, it was a direct flight. We bought a new bed as the other was a futon. New sheets, I bought items to put in the welcome package, toothbrushes, snacks, etc. I bought them new towels and gave them the kids' bathroom. Cleaned up and down the house. And the day they arrived, the first thing I heard was, Why Frontier? They are horrible, OP. I will never fly with them again. Well, beggars do, uh, do choose, don't they? Try to go with American Airlines next time you buy me a free flight. I'll let that go, but I could see this trip was not going to change my opinion of her. She asked what was for dinner as she wanted to go out. My daughter has celiac disease, so she can't have gluten and it makes it hard to go out. She stated, then cook her food and bring it. You know that, like, they don't, like, let you do that, right? I chose to make a barbecue bowl instead. Everyone else loved it besides Kathy. She didn't eat, only opened my expensive wine and poured a glass. When Tim mentioned, that's OP's really nice wine, could you get a glass from another one? She proceeded to pour the wine back in the bottle that she drank from. <laughs> I also found her rummaging through our pantry eating snacks and she didn't have dinner. She ate around five protein bars my hubby uses for weightlifting. Oh, bro. Oh, you do marry the family, don't you? I was told by my kids she spilt Coke on our couch on accident and was wiping it with our blanket. We have nice hardwood floors, so of course they were sticky. Left Coke bottles spread throughout the house, took all of the items I bought for the welcome package home, even though she didn't use them. We went to the beach and we live near the Carolina coast, so we traveled in my hubby's truck. The two hour drive was too much on her back. She's a bigger girl, probably 260, and then asked for my son to switch with her. I said, no, he needs to sit in the middle of the front because he was old enough and could fit. How was she going to fit? By having us both in the back seat with him on my lap. She pouted the entire time and ate candy and snacks while smacking her mouth noisily. She then proceeded once we got to the beach to whine about no one applying sunscreen to her. On, on her? I said I was putting it on my kids first. She could ask her husband. Isn't it like your honeymoon? Isn't it supposed to be like a, like a sexy thing? sexy, sensual. She could ask her husband as my kiddos were excited to start swimming in the ocean. She apparently never did because she developed a horrible sunburn. Now all of us got a little sun. We were there for hours, but Kathy was obviously in pain by the time we got back to the truck. Once we got home, she took a shower, grabbed some Gatorade and went upstairs. They were leaving the next day. So I mentioned to Jim, wash anything you want. Just try to shake the sand out before putting it in the washer. After tending to my family, I realized Kathy was doing laundry. I didn't think twice because maybe she was uncomfortable with Jim touching her clothes. The next day, as we were leaving, Jim comes to me and says, there was a little accident in the bed. I said, no problem. I was going to clean them anyways. I thought it was her period by the way he was talking. I know how embarrassing that can be. And I would just throw away the sheets. Nope. There was poop. Poop on the duvet. Sand on the floor. In the bathroom. A dirty razor with hair from down there on it. I was steaming pissed. So I started scrubbing everything, threw away the duvet. And when I was done, I went to start the laundry only to find out she didn't shake out any sand. She washed and dried clothes full of sand, broke both my washer and dryer, had to have them both replaced. She never did say thank you as well. They should just get divorced. It's fine. Just, just, just get, get divorced. Can you divorce your sister-in-law? <laughs> <laughs> who poops on a bed? How did that poo get on the bed? How did that poo get there? Never mind, I don't want to know. That, that's Can you uh, hear that? That's the cruise ship. This is what we've heard. This is what every we've heard every single night. Can you hear that? Every day, every every single Every dinner hall, every single thing. That is a little scary. If you weren't scared of cruise ships before. What is one thing that went horribly wrong on a vacation? This was our honeymoon. Um, we booked a seven day cruise and my husband had surprised me by booking snorkeling. So we get to Puerto Vallarta and then I just had a really weird feeling and I was like, I don't want to go snorkeling anymore. I was in a bad mood. And he's like, I already paid for it and booked for it. Come on, let's try it. We're never going to do this again. Everything was amazing. The boat ride was great. We got to see whales and all the cool stuff. Great people. We land to where we uh, are supposed to go snorkeling. I'm not the greatest swimmer, but it was like a short distance. And it was amazing. We got to see all those little fish. And 
we just kept our head underwater the whole time because like it was so cool that we didn't notice that everyone left <gasps> they left us i was the first one to notice and then i tapped my husband's shoulder and i'm like look there's no one here <gasps> they just left you there oh god this is like one of my ultimate fears they just left you there that is you know that's like the the premise for like a horror movie right clearly you're okay because you're like at home filming this right now but um how does one just forget two people swimming don't you have like a little roll call or something immediately well, no. honeymoon well, immediately in the maldives no. they said i'm telling you right now i seen see what enough. i needed to see is that okay <laughs> oh so you had fun eh that was fun good view great weather <laughs> The honeymoon in Thailand we showed on Instagram. Oh, love it. Love to see that. So idyllic. The honeymoon that actually happened. <laughs> yeah, you never show all the things that actually happen on vacation from, you know, just being drunk all the time, going exploring, going on mopeds. I still have a scar from the last time I went to Mexico. By the way, whoever sent me that pawpaw ointment, it's really helping. Appreciate you. All right, I saved the best for last. When you thought you were going on your honeymoon to relax. Oh no. Uh-oh. Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Is that supposed to happen? Are you sinking? Is that boat sinking? Is that just like part of the fun? Let's just go on a boat where we're mostly submerged in water. It's like white water rafting. OMG, the videos do not do this justice. The water slaps you across the face and you drown for a few seconds. Stop. Why would I want that? Who decided this was a good vacation activity? <laughs> Let alone a good honeymoon activity. People pay to get this done in Niagara. Yes, excuse me. I would very much like to pay to sit in a boot at a boot. <laughs> I would very much love to pay to sit on a boat and get slapped in the face with some water. Take my money. We thought it was going to be a fast boat with some splash. No, the drivers were chanting submersion. <laughs> oh, dear God. I swear, I thought I was gonna drown after this. I held my breath way too soon and took in so much water. Oh, buddy, dude, what? Did this in Mexico thinking we were on a speedboat ride, shocked when we started doing the Titanic dive. <laughs> oh no! Okay, can we start a petition to get rid of whatever the hell this activity is? You're literally just paying someone to ruin your honeymoon for you by going on this boat. We are supposed to be on a plane heading to our honeymoon right now. As you can see, we're sitting in the car. We got up at 5.30 this morning to leave our house at 6 a.m. for an 8.40 a.m. flight. As soon as we woke up, we had an email that said, your flight has been delayed an hour. We're working to reduce this delay. Please come to the airport. So we packed up all our and got in the car when we got another email that said, your flight has been canceled. No explanation, no solution, just canceled. More specifically, it pretended to be cute and said, oops, your flight's been canceled. <laughs> so we called Expedia where we talked to three different people who were like, your flight hasn't been canceled. We don't have confirmation of that. So then we called JetBlue to talk to a customer service agent, but the wait was 270 minutes. So then we called Expedia back and told them, we promise the flight is canceled, please look it up. And they called us back five minutes later and said, we just spent five minutes on the phone with JetBlue and their wait time is five hours. So then we drove 40 minutes to the airport to speak with an agent and they told us, go home, we can't help you. Just wait for an email. F you, JetBlue. When I tell you that I would be fuming. I mean, just so you know, I think you're entitled to a little something, something. This is the only time that you're entitled, okay? The only time. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you, you're entitled to something. Subscribe!